forms and tables, the two problem childs of React. Well, forms have been made better by a library called React Hook Form. That library makes it pretty enjoyable to work with forms. Tables, not so much. If you had any demand for tables in what logic they could handle, traditionally at least I resorted to Material UI. You know what the problem was? The problem was you're shipping 300 kilobytes of JavaScript to the browser because it needs to be a client component. I don't need to tell you that's horrible. Not anymore. There's a new component in a library I've talked about twice on this channel already from Shadcn UI. It has just gotten better and solves a real world problem. This is the result of what you can build with what I'm about to show you. You can select all the fields at once. You can select all the fields right here. You can see how many fields are selected. You have built-in pagination. Super easy to add as a plugin. You can have certain columns. You can disable them if you wanted to. You can filter by email. We just want ken99 at yahoo.com, for example. You can sort by alphabet, for example, the email, you can format each cell, you can have individual cell actions. What this does for you, how much time this saves you is ridiculous. And here's how it works. We've got our app folder and then recommended by shadcn-ui. This is what we're using for the table element. This is the recommended folder structure. I've tried it out twice and it works pretty well. We've got a payments folder. And inside of the payments folder, we have two files. First, the columns in which we show what data is shown for each column. For example, the email and their formatting. Very, very important. For example, the formatting right here, right? This is the amount. We've got the dollar sign, then the actual amount and two zeros after the period. How is that done? We can go into our columns.tsx file and take a look at the implementation. This is super cool. Up here, you can see what type we expect our data to be. For example, we have an ID, an amount, a status, and also an email for each data entry. And then check this out. The normal fields you can see, for example, the status and the email are done just like this. And what this actually looks like in the browser, again, status and email right here. This is what it looks like in the browser, status, email, and then we have all the fields right here. And then the amount we want formatted, right? The way we do that is by calling the cell, parsing the amount and formatting that with the intel.number format API, no external package used at all. And so we have access to every single detail on how we display our data, which is beautiful. And to display all this information, the crucial component that handles that is this data table. Now there's a lot of imports in the data table going on. It might confuse you. Um, I'm not gonna bore you with these implementation details. Here's what's important. First off, we are expecting two props, the columns and the data, the columns that are actually shown in our table and then the data that is displayed um, below, for example, all the emails, all the statuses and and so on. And then we are simply using a hook that is being provided to us by Tanstack React Table. We're using this use React Table hook right here. We're passing in the data, the columns, and plugins that we want. Adding pagination is as easy as removing this line right here. Check this out. I'm going to save this file. Let's go to our um, table. And you can see there are currently 50 entries right here. And all we need for pagination to happen is to add this line right here, the get pagination row model that we also import from this library, hit save, and automatically it is reduced to 10 entries. And by the way, if you're wondering how you can control this pagination, it is so straightforward, my grandma could do it. So we can add a button, for example, previous page, and then on the on click handler for that button, we can invoke a function inline called table and then dot previous page and invoke that. That is beautiful. We can go back, we can see the button appears right here. And right now there is no previous page because this is the first page. But if I just change this to, for example, next page, you could see what happens. We're going to navigate. Look at these amounts changing right here. We are navigating to the next page. And then the last one, no results, which is also built in. It's very beautiful what you can do with this. It's super powerful, easy plug and play, and I've had a great experience with this library. Oh, and by the way, here's how we're getting the data. This is the server component page that we're using. The other two were client components. And then we can just create a div with a little bit of padding, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and then a data table 
um, right inside of here that we are passing what we expected from earlier, the columns and the data. And this is how we're generating the data. It matches the type we saw earlier, right here, the payment type, consisting of an ID, an amount, a status, and an email that we're then passing to the data table from the server component to the client component. And if you follow the documentation that I'm going to link below, you can build something just like this. It's crazy how much time this saves you. I used to resort to material.ui and I'm so glad I don't need to do that anymore. If you want anything that has to do with tables, give it a shot. This is not sponsored or anything. Um, I just think this is awesome. and will save us all so much time in all of our applications that need some sort of table inside of them. Are you interested in using this library? I certainly am and I'd be super interested in hearing your opinion. With that said, I'm gonna see you in the next video. Have a good one and bye bye.